Good afternoon and welcome to the webinar, Why Excel is Failing Your Tolerance Stacks. This event, brought to you by Quality, is sponsored by DCS. I'm your moderator, Daryl Sealand, Editorial Director of Quality. Thanks for joining us. Today's presenters are Gary Bell and Brenda Quinlan. Brenda is Senior Dimensional Analyst for DCS. Gary is a Dimensional Engineer with more than 15 years of experience working for DCS specializing in GD&T and dimensional management. Gary received his degree in engineering from Wayne State University, as well as becoming a senior level ASME certified instructor. With DCS, he has successfully completed many projects for major companies in the automotive, aerospace and defense, medical device and electronics industries. As the senior instructor at DCS, Gary has been instrumental in delivering instruction and expertise to both DCS customers and employees. Don't forget to submit your questions and later in the program, our presenter will address as many as possible. Today's event is being recorded and archived on qualitymag.com. And now I'm excited to turn it over to today's presenters, Gary Bell and Brenda Quinlan. Hello everybody. This is Gary Bell. Thank you for joining me today. Today we're going to discuss and show the effects of uh, 1D tolerance stacks, 2D tolerance stacks, and 3D tolerance stacks, and why we would recommend you go directly to 3D tolerance stacks. Our agenda is to show and discuss a little bit about 1D, show the difference between one-dimensional and three-dimensional tolerance stacks, <clears throat> show you a very, I feel like a very cool, simple model in our 3D software depicting the differences between 1D and 3D. Uh, we're gonna discuss a little bit about um, worst case and root sum squared analysis or RS, otherwise referred to as RSS. And then we'll go into a a little more realistic model, but still a non, not 100% realistic model to show you the effects of how um, three-dimensional tolerances interact with each other. And we will end it with a um, Q&A session. So what is worst case? Worst case um, tolerance stacks are when you set all of your tolerances to their min or max extreme that produces the maximum output on your assembly variation. <clears throat> it's the only way to um, guarantee that your assembly does not exceed its um, assembly specifications. However, if you design a product to satisfy worst case analysis, <clears throat> you're bound to um, tolerance your parts way wow. too tight and uh, make your assembly cost um, uh, more than it probably needs to. So we're going to just focus on a simple three block assembly. And you can see here, if I have three blocks, 10 plus or minus one, seven plus or minus one, and 12 plus or minus two, this is a simple stack. We can, uh, we can just look at it and see that, okay, the minimum dimension, if we are only looking at it in one dimension, left and right, the minimum value would be 25 and the maximum value would be 33, making my variation, worst case, 29 nominal plus or minus four or eight millimeter range of variation. <clears throat> However, when you do that uh, one one dimensionally, you can't take into account the fact that uh, if there's any orientation tolerances or form tolerances, how your assembly will react when it's um, tipping and rocking. So as you see from this picture here, you could have a minimum that could be less than your minimum stack as it folded in or out. So 
what are some of the shortcomings of 1D stacks? Is it does assume your tolerances are all have a one-to-one -one relationship to your measurement, and it doesn't take into effect any of that angularity or geometric effect from how your components locate to each other. And when you're doing one one D stacks, you pretty much have to stack your product in all three directions anyway to confirm that everything is gonna be within its dimensional specifications. So we should just go ahead and do a 3D stack automatically. So the advantages of 3D is it will capture the geometric effects and the angular variation. However, to do a three-dimensional tolerance stack on paper can be uh, very rigorous, lots of trig and calculations. So we use a computer to do it to eliminate um, dimensional errors that can be made while you're trying to do your stack. Uh, one thing when you're using a Excel spreadsheet, <clears throat> you have to put in all of the inputs. And if you don't have the exact stack path, you may forget an input or two. When you do a 3D tolerance analysis with the CAD data, your opportunity to miss a tolerance stack decreases.